so as hard as this is for me to say, um, welcome to my 10th anime next. In my first year, I just had the demo disc that I had made with uh, my roommate in college, and I was just handing it out, like tossing it like frisbees. It was in a plastic jewel case, because back then, like a case of 30 was like $20, which was ridiculous, because we all knew the medium was going to be dead in like an hour and a half. Because <laughs> if you go into the bowels of a Best Buy right now, down towards like crappy buy, you can still buy VHS tapes. Um, in case Fallout 4 becomes a documentary. <laughs> but my very first year at Anime Next, uh, as I was working in the registration line, I noticed some of my first ever favorite emotions. There's something that happens at a convention where everything becomes canon, even to, even to the character. So I saw this Vash the Stampede standing in line, trying on one of my all-time favorites, and then I saw, I had not started watching One Piece at the time, but the favorite um, rubber screaming boy monkey, D. Luffy, the, the yeah. king of the Straw Pies from One Piece, had a box of, of Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> and I knew, Bash loves donuts. <laughs> and I hope donuts love him. He walks up to uh, the Bash Stampede, and I can clearly hear, dollar, dollar. For the first time, Monkey D. Luffy was doing something illegal. <laughs> he was scalping pastries. <laughs> No wonder that bounty is so high! You tried bringing a non-Starbucks cup into a Starbucks? They will scream at you like children of the corn! But this is my, uh, my... 10th annex of Unbelievable. I've been with it ever since the Meadowlands and then the Somersets and now here where we, where we take over Atlantic City so the, the Weeaboos have a place to drop off their parents. Yeah, we hand them some money, don't you spend it all! Don't you talk to strangers! If the homeless man says he has a puppy down his pants, he probably doesn't. All right, have fun, Grandma. Unexpectedly, um, my grandmother is down in Atlantic City so frequently, I learned that by giving my last name at any hotel around here, comes to an eye reaction, are you Ruth's grandson? <laughs> So now I know where my inheritance went. <laughs> I, I cannot believe that this has happened. I want to thank you guys so much for all of you who waited in line, for all of you who came in to, to pack the room. I know half of you are going to leave in 10 minutes to line for uh, cosplay burlesque. I don't blame you for it, but no, I secretly resent you. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for making this out. Holy hell. Give yourselves a round of applause first. first, first. I mean every time. I'm glad that, you met, that you've all made it out to the con. I'm glad we shared laughs and we're carrying on. We're free to be nerds, so that implies us to talk about stories and characters that inspire us. So we learn a new game. Sometimes it's me versus you. We've had a couple losses, but a couple wins too. Whatever the dice roll, I'm just happy to play. I'm happy to see you, and I'm happy to say, game on, my friends, game on. Cosplay what you want. Be pretty or strong until you realize you were both all along. The switch ain't no hitch, so that hem and nothing fits you, yet be your own crystal gem. Strut your stuff. Doesn't matter who won, you are an experience. You're here to have fun. Game on, my friends, game on. If you like tapping buttons, if you're that kind of fan, or if you do card games, keep tapping that mana. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> But always make space at the gaming table. Help newbies feel welcomed if you're ever able. Be the pathfinder you want to see in the world. Reach out to lost boys and hopeless fangirls. Game on, my friends. Game on. So by the power of Grayskull, may the force be with you. Cat catch them all. Go fast and have your pops too. Moon prism power. Thundercats ho. Keep looking up. Boomer lives. Enjoy your burrito. Avengers assemble, Morphin Time Excelsior, Sweet Christmas Hulk Smash, may your power level soar. Good night, Night Vale. Good night, beware my power, Green Lantern's light. One minute to win, round three, fight, game over. Continue? It's gonna be alright. Don't be a dick, just to thine own self be true. Evildoers beware, they can't take the sky from you. Game on, my friends, game on.
I don't want to make this political. I, I don't want to. But this is just a question to everybody deep down in your soul. Have you ever farted so loud you woke the cat up? <laughs> the look that that cat gives you, it's almost as bad as if you ever meow back to it. Because that's a way of, get, of like trying to communicate with you. And so you think, yes, I'll encourage, I will move it's like when you, It's like when you meet someone from Latin America and you try to talk back to them in a Latin American accent, so maybe they'll hear it as well, and you're like, you are just the villain from Get Out, leave me alone. <laughs> but like if a cat ever meows back at you, meow, 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 okay? They go, <laughs> it worked. <laughs> Minions, he understands. That was not funny and your accent is offensive. <laughs> Drop the tuna, or you will wake up with my butt in your face. <laughs> in fact. Oh. <laughs> um, Attack on Titan is back, so it's time for everyone to, you know, get out those, those pleather straps and those great white jeans and get those massive honking maneuver gear so you can block all hallways forever. <laughs> Because it's your day to be a cosplayzilla. Um, but I have to ask, so in, in this new season, the intro animation, it's a minute and a half long, and it's super intense, and half the crap they play and show has nothing to do with the show. Okay, let me try to break this down. One of the first images in this new season of Attack on Titan, Attack on Titan, for those of you um, not familiar with it, you think it's a remake of a zombie apocalypse but it's not, it tricks you. Then you think it's like super steampunky and like a, a new kind of like modern Germany. Ah, but it's not, you see? Then you start thinking this is the single gayest lap and you are absolutely right. You could not be more correct. So the Titans go for, because they're these super tall, their faces don't emote, they don't, they don't move except when it's moving forward to eat people. They are these super tall, weirdly animated Valley of the Dolls sunburnt, like super tall cannibalistic Scandinavians. That's what it looks like. <laughs> like some of them are walking weird. Some of them have the, the strangest expression like on. Some of them just have like a random mustache. <laughs> and now in the, the new intro gets even weirder because they'll show guys like this mofo. <laughs> this is just it's just the, the opening animation and then the, the, the opening song is still building up and this guy is just walking back. He clearly can't close his jaw. He's got no ear, so he can't shut his mouth. And all I can think of when I see this guy is, Arr! Arr! Like, he is that brony who's gonna get in line for the fourth time that day for the same person's autograph. You can sign my butt kick. I didn't want to sign the first Someone who, who's there every year because he needs it. So this guy can't close his mouth, doesn't make eye contact, no ear whatsoever. This is the Sean Spicer Titan. That's where this is going. Now, in the new season of Attack on Titan, they don't just have, like, the armor Titan and the colossal Titan. There's a brand new freaky Titan. It's the Beast Titan. Look at this weird guy. The pointy elf ears, the deadpan black eyes, the pointy weird rows of teeth. And to make it even weirder, so this huge bearded like Harry and the Henderson Yeti Titan has also somehow shaved his midriff and looks ripped. So like he was somehow like, what, did they body shame a Titan? Like, we don't normally have hair, dude. You gotta do something. I will throw horses at people. <laughs> Even weirder, so the, the limbs and the arms on the, on the Beast Titan are super long and weird and wonky. And what makes him walk so weird is he's got this fupa that's bigger than my apartment in New York City. Bigger than a, than a, than a one bedroom out in Queens. It's this massive, like he swallowed a lifesaver instead of wearing a lifesaver and the, t the Titanic is sinking anyway. Well, I'm gonna look fabulous. But like, he tries to talk to people. He tries to command crazy people, but ultimately he just wants everything shorter and not him to die. So this is our Steve Bannon Titan. <laughs> or I also call Greek Titan because that's about as hairy as I look at this. But then they have clips like this. They have the second, okay, so, all right, so in Attack on Titan, it is humans versus titans, and sometimes you'll see a horse, and that is all the life.
life in this world. But they will go through like the move, the, they, they flash cut through evolution itself. So you see like an iguana eating a, a cricket and a hawk cap capturing a, a sheep and like a, a believer beating up a dead head because you know, it's all about cannibalism in a way. It's all about like the battle and the att and, and, and the attack. It is about the, the predation of another species. So what they do to show this metaphor is something that never happens in the show or the manga. They have Beast Titan leading the most eclectic army of animals that make no sense. Now, as a predator, as a predator, I understand this is clearly the badonka donk to end all donka donks. <laughs> This is a beast type. He eats people. This is a hippopotamus, the number one killer of people in Africa. This is a giraffe. <laughs> whose job is to eat leaves and terrify nothing. <laughs> whose job is to, and then there's an elephant, and then there's a, not even the, okay. Okay, dinosaur fans. Name a dinosaur with sharp teeth. Any dinosaur but a platypus dinosaur, but a duck bill, ducky from the land before time. And he's just, he's just joining in like, oh, or, or are we hate marching? Is this a hate march? I'll gladly join in, Mer, because emails, Mer, Mer. So he's just uh, the dinosaur that no one loves. You've got the fat lazy idiot. You've got the silent moron who's not even there to eat people. And then you've just got elephant ear hate a lot. Evolution of predators, the greatest predator to ever walk the earth, technically, is the quacking tyrannosaurus. The elephant, I guess he's just mad at the ivory trade. You know what? Let him have it. He wants to kill some people, let him have it. We all saw Dumbo. We know what Thomas had his end into that poor, uh, I, I almost said rhino. This is how good I am at geography, the poor elephant. We've already talked about this idiot. But, okay. Now, I am not a biologist. A hickering of where you can find an aquatic <laughs> mammal that whenever this thing shows up on a beach it's normally dying <laughs> why are you flying <laughs> what are we grilling you're not even stepping on people you're missing <laughs> like this ancient horrible does anyone know the name of this thing this thing ate, ate, ate the mega shark that would eat whales casually it was called a what you're fr we're friends now. <laughs> so you got Megalodon, a whale, Greek Titan, plus Fupa, Bumbar, King of the Elephants, and Stacy here. I don't, this, this never shows up in Attack on Titan! This is, you never see another animal other than a Titan! What the hell is this season? <laughs> Watching the season, you're waiting for the T-Rex. <laughs> because that's the point of every anime intro. It shows you the other cosplays for your friends to dress up as so you can come to the cosplay. <laughs> what is this march against humanity's purpose. Its entire purpose is to defend the only source that can save humanity against the Titans, Aaron Yeager, who at one point in his Titan form, instead of punching his enemy a Titan, punches himself in the face so hard he evaporates his jaw and his fist. Now Mike Tyson could drop a guy in one hit. He would not explode like a balloon into confetti. But this is the entire purpose. These things are marching across. And what is their purpose? To either devour or stand against an impulsive idiot child who doesn't even know his role in the world. An impulsive idiot child that the wrong people put their faith in. An impulsive idiot child who is apparently save the world, we're going to build a wall and make the Titans pay for it. But don't worry, don't worry, because he 
he's got a really smart, progressive, strong lady next to him with a weird pseudo-sexual relationship, maybe a really strong, smart woman next to him was really a real. I said, I said, strong, smart woman, blonde, strong, smart. Okay, I'll take it. 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 Ultimately, where are we gonna be if the Titans don't devour us? I'm not waiting to find out. Erwin and Levi, 2020. Tear down the leaders. The, just let it burn. Mm. That's right, we're just gonna go full. I'm gonna leave that bad boy up for you. Uh, my name is Uncle Yo. I'm a geek specific stand up comedian. That's how I s say hello. <laughs> we're at 855, so let's just roll them dice and see where things go. <laughs> when I first got started doing stand up comedy, um, like nine years ago at this point, oh my god, nine years ago. I would do it only for exposure, hoping that like people would see the show, they would want to um, come out for it. Um, but then like people would start offering either rides down, or they start offering food stipends, or like rooms at the hotel, which blew my mind, or free swag. But I realized if you do something for exposure, you gotta be careful because if you follow television, exposure is the only thing on TV that can kill white people. <laughs> It's like, it's like that and jogging during the intro credits of an episode of CSI. Like, you're clearly gonna be found dead, lady. It's the only thing that, 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 that can kill people is exposure, much like the latest Legend of Zelda game, which is Legend of Zelda Elf vs. Wild, and Wild wins. Wild has lightning bolts. Because you, you're always gonna die in Legend of Zelda thinking, I don't need the hang glider, I can survive that fall. It's the top three things that kill off any p player character in Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder is falling damage, drowning, not knowing when the GM is being sarcastic. I don't know, Ben. Why don't you try and finger the drow? Okay. <laughs> You find cobwebs, and you're poisoned. Oh, that got dark and under real fast. I try to seduce the beholder. I tell him beauty is in the eye of you. He gives you the stink eye, and then the laser eye. Because it's a beholder, you idiots. There are certain things we have to go with. But the thing is, Exposure is what's gonna kill off white people at the time. If you ever watch the Discovery Channel, and they, they always pose it as like a question, how did this happen? First off, there's a thing called gravity. <laughs> Second of all, there's no smart reason to go rock climbing. I go indoor rock climbing, which is like, which is like, um, to twister what Quidditch is to rugby. All right, like, you just kind of go up from that. But they always mention it's like it's supposed to be a surprise on the report. Skyler and Cooper left their air-conditioned homes in suburban California to go base jumping from Trust Fund Mountain. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> the, gravity! Gravity will go wrong by going right every time! It doesn't suddenly stop! Grant and Brant went to do CrossFit in the Ebola-infested waters of Scrotal Rot Swamp. Why didn't they come back? Aaron and Armin joined the Survey Corps. Uh-oh, two dead white guys. Looks like we need someone else to explain their reaction to the new Wonder Woman trailer and start insulting it. <laughs> Do you ever realize that white people invented the horror genre, basically? Like, they had to use their imagination of things that want us dead. Like, they're, they're either trying to go into, like, a mummy's tomb or a vampire's castle as opposed to people of color who go out... <laughs> Here's a horror movie in two lines. She had an opinion. She posted it on Tumblr. The thing is, you groan and you laugh, but I hate how right that is. We just had Wonder Woman come out, and I, I am gonna have three nieces by the end of this year. And that means in another, uh, 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 uh. Them. The Dollar Tree is the most expensive. I'm willing to go for them for their birthday and Christmas. But in another like, in another like eight years, I can sit them down. I can show them Wonder Woman. I can show them last year's Ghostbuster and say, I don't care what your daddy says. 
you'll be whatever you want and you'll be awesome at it, period. And so the weekend after we get Wonder Woman, we get the great new feminist hit, The Mummy. An African lady wants to see the world, not if this white guy can stop her. <laughs> Why do you still make movies, Tom Cruise? You were on TV in the 90s. That means you're set for life. Just Will Wheaton it. Just pop up every five years on the internet and vanish. <laughs> That's the key to success. <laughs> now, Attack on Titan <laughs> is about people on the screaming edge of horror. The first three episodes, it is terrifying. And then three episodes later, it is, it gets exhausting. And then three more later, it just kind of gets funny. <laughs> because you sustain that level of unadulterated panic. Oh my God, they're bursting through the walls. We're all gonna die. We're all gonna die. It's like, yes, I've worked retail during the Christmas holiday as well. <laughs> I'm sorry. They look like people, but they're gonna devour our bodies and souls. Yeah, welcome to Boscov's kids. <laughs> I'm on seven back-to-back, 14-hour -back, clopin' shifts on Black Friday weekend and the store CD is stuck on Feliz Navidad. I'm trapped in purgatory without the benefits. Oh, good. It's the day after Christmas. Re return day. Give me my drawer, Becky. I'll see you on the halls of Valhalla. <laughs> dive, son, dive. The, the holiday season, for all of you who've ever worked retail, is sustained psychological torture. And there's apparently a war on Christmas. If there's a war on Christmas in America, then there's a war on the sun during the day. <laughs> then there is a war on salt in the ocean during high tide. <laughs> have, you, have you ever... Does anyone have a Kwanzaa song they've ever heard play over... The, it doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't happen that way. But what we need... We need a season to detox and get rid of Christmas songs because you know what you have, you know what you 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 should never hear a sane person say this mix is awesome you know what would be great some Christmas music <laughs> <laughs> yeah man I've got I've got some you know Fiona Apple on here I got some later Gwen Stefani solo stuff and I threw in Big Crosby's White Christmas because <laughs> this is why you gave me lotion and told me to put it back in the basket I'm gonna get out of the car right now because Christmas music is just as dumb as club music. All club music the last decade has been, I'm in a club, in a club, in a club, in a club. These my boys, we're in a club, in a club, in a... Oh my God, we're in a club, in a club, in a club. This guy's buying me drinks, Jackie, we're in a club. They're in a club, in a club. Christmas music is the same way. There are songs that just tell you what time of year it is. It's Christmas time now. Now is Christmas time, Christmas. Now for Christmas time. I would feel so much better if just for an hour, every radio station just played death metal screaming the word Christmas, and then it went back to regular business. Just, just dealt with it. Just made it go away. And even if that, maybe we should just have some, we should have a, a Christmas music season to celebrate the end of the Christmas music season. That's what all February should be, is, dear God, we made it through again. So let's have some sequels to Christmas songs. You know, it's like some of them are just obscure and outdated and make no sense. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Okay, okay, let's get Holly's consent first before we string up her entrails around the walls and spread her thinner than a Yuri on Ice fan theory. <laughs> Let's have some sequels. Granddad hunted down Rudolph and got revenge for Grandma. <laughs> but baby, it's unnaturally warm outside. Get out now, now's your chance to run. <laughs> oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, get back in the box in the attic, you plastic lie. <laughs> or for you all naturals, oh, Christmas tree, Oh, Christmas tree, you're shedding worse than the cat, you're stinky and brown, get out of my house. <laughs> the Night Santa Went Crazy by Weird Al Yankovic. I know it doesn't fit with the rest of the songs, I think it's a good song, I think more people should know it. <laughs> Gone away is the bluebird, here to stay is a new bird, and the bluebird also came back too. Turns out it's unseasonably warm because uh, enough of it to have a second spring, and now the local wildlife are starving themselves from overpopulation, but climate change is a lie because emails! <laughs> 
first day after Christmas, I threw up behind my true love's back. <laughs> 12 iTunes gift cards, everything from Loot Crate, much cheaper on eBay, nine Dunkin' Donuts gift cards. Why weren't you listening? You know I hate their coffee. Starbucks or get out, six Overwatch kids. Five cards from your siblings. I'm not learning your nieces and nephews names. <laughs> Four socks that don't fit, three obscure pop figurines, two anime cell phone charms, and your dad's make America great again. <laughs> Return it to its point of origin. I uh, support something else now. A friend of mine is um, making a habit and career of dressing up as Disney princesses and being rented out to parties. Let me rephrase that. I just heard how that came out of my mouth. A friend of mine is invited to children's birthday parties and paid to play games and dress up as favorite Disney princesses. Okay. Question for you guys. Which part of that sentence do you believe more? The fact that I have a friend or the fact that there's a job of party Disney dress up princess? Yeah. First part of the first Wow, this is really energetic. I regret asking you people, this is more disappointing than Iron Fist. My, her favorite to dress up as is obviously Snow White. Why? Because if she gets knocked out on Apple Teenies, she can fall asleep on the love seat, and it's canon. <laughs> and they leave her alone. No one. Who gave her the fruit salad? You got four more rounds of hokey pokey. No. Shh, 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 she's got to sleep it off, you guys. <laughs> Whoops. I need to do that as a job. <laughs> Find a way to just make money drinking Apple Teenies. <laughs> I thought for a moment it switched back to our lovely parade of predators, I guess not. <laughs> Last year, we had the honor of going to um, uh, Orlando Studios, Universal Studios, for a friend's, I'm not making this up, we went over Halloween weekend for a friend's pirate-themed wedding, which is the single coolest sentence I have ever said, and probably will ever say. What this meant was we went through my rides I've been waiting for my whole life. We spent the week watching through all the Harry Potter movies so we'd get the references. And I finally went, and when you wait in line, they wait, they said you out first. It, from the movie, it looks like it's so well done. It could be 84 degrees. You, you step into that immersive environment. You see snow on the roof. <laughs> I'm in the second film already. For some reason, that becomes your new voice. And you deal with it. But you go inside, and the portraits of Hogwarts will start arguing with each other. It's like 20 minutes long. It's not a two second video that's looping like The Simpsons ride. And then you'll get into Dumbledore's office, and one of the Dumbledores will talk to you. And then you'll get into the actual potions room where like holograms of the kids will come out, and everything is moving. And when you get to the corner, you get to run into the sorting hat. This thing looks like it's from the film. It is talking, it is moving. And I don't know about you guys. I've never had a favorite anything growing up. I never had like, that's my character, that's my team, that's my Plinko board. I never got stored it into a proper Harry Potter school. I would take the test and it would always come up 24%, 24%, 24%, 24, muggle. <laughs> what am I on, the janitorial staff? So, saw the sorting hat. And I got to put on the sorting hat for the first time in my life and it put me in detention. You're apparently not supposed to touch the animatronics. <laughs> <laughs> I also met my Patronus, which was interesting. Um, I know that's not something that makes any sense. Okay, so um, muggles in the audience, in the Harry Potter books and Harry Potter movies, there are these ghosts or shades or rates of absolute despair and depression. They're called... <laughs> The Dementors. What's so horrible about the Dementor? They get up and they suck you out in the worst possible way. They appear and they drain joy and love and happiness and even your happiest memories. The capacity to feel joy. It's like, yes, we get it. It's getting divorced while still in middle school. We get it. We get it. So to combat this, in the Harry Potter world, they have a spell. They have a spell. Call it out. Expecto Patronum, where you launch a ghost animal out of your wand, and it's your own special little Digimon persona, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure stand thing goes, it's all special to you, you little frickin' Hufflepuff wannabe. <laughs> Harry Potter gets to book seven on flashlight and ghost deer. Because Hermione was the only one smart enough to learn any new spell. She's the real main character. Real main character in that series. 
Now your Patronus becomes like an animal. Like for Luna Lovegood, I think it's like an adorable little otter. For some people, it's like for Snape, it was it was a doe, it was a deer, it was a very female deer, and Harry launches out a full-on buck, because he shoots out a buck, he's got the buck shot. I met my Patronus. It's not supposed to be another person, but I found my epitome of joy back in January. There's a wonderful convention called Setsukan, and if you staff Setsukan, you have my hats off. It's wonderfully run. They treat us like guests and family there every year. But they have the Penn State Creamery. They will give you ice cream that will make you want to visit central Pennsylvania during an election season. It's so good. You point to a flavor and they give you two scoops the size of your sternum. And they say, that'll be $3. I sat there with two fists equivalent of chocolate chip cookie dough. And behind me, I noticed people are, more people are coming into the creamery because it stays open until 11 p.m. because America. So we all look like the beast type. This little girl enters and she could not have been older than five. But she enters the Penn State Creamery and this is what she does. to be a person because if that were the case, like everyone, every girl here would be launching out David Bowie and Tom Hiddleston out of their wizard wiener. They're not, it's not supposed to be another person. You want a joy? Eat Tammy. Go, girl, go! Ghosts are surrounding me. What makes me, what could possibly be happier than a five-year-old child holding two scoops of ice cream the size of her skull? You find something more joyous to me and you bring it to my face. Supposed to be like a crab or something. Obliviate. <laughs> and in the Harry Potter world, they also have their own sport. They have Quidditch, which is when uh, J.K. Rowling asked herself, how can I make rugby more dangerous? <laughs> which is like watching ice hockey and thinking, this needs polar bears and spiked pits. <laughs> In fact, the air should just be on fire. <laughs> yeah. It's such an elitist game. Like, 16 people rise 50 feet into the air on their brooms, and the only two people that matter are the little ones that are flying around trying to grab a gold ball. <coughs> we just scored eight, we just scored 80 points. Hey, you caught it, game's done, go away now. <laughs> now there are real colleges with real Quidditch leagues. Raise your hand if you've ever been a part of one. Shit. <laughs> Expecting a few more than that. I briefly dated a girl uh, after college who was a bludger and took me out to a game. Now a game of Quidditch in our world. Keep in mind, in the movies and the books, it's awesome. They get out of the broom, they go up 50 feet, now we've had it falling damage. Now it's dangerous, now it's cool and awesome, now we're flying. To do it here, the athletes find brooms, be they metal, wood, or a hockey stick, <laughs> put it between their legs, and play slide tackle dodgeball for two hours straight. <laughs> Which doesn't look like a sport from the outside. From the outside, it looks like uh, soccer hooligans walked into a pub to watch the game, got really mad and upset, the, the janitorial staff asked them to leave, and they took the fight outside. <laughs> That is what this looks like. And my girlfriend at the time is just shoulder checking people. I don't even know if she's playing or if she's on someone's team. But she comes out, this is a field of 16, like 20 to 30 year old people, none of them sober. None of them sober. She comes back with a black eye and bruises cause she's had a hockey stick between her thighs. Bruises down both of the inner thighs. And she says, all right, you gotta drive. You get to meet my dad. I'm sorry? 
I got to meet a retired Long Island police commissioner with his stumbling Slytherin daughter covered in bruises. Now friends, there are people in your life who will tell you the truth will set you free. They're lying. Because what am I supposed to do when six foot three of Officer Castellanato has to lean his head to get out of the door? Oh, Hagrid has an extended family. Good to know. Um, pleasure to meet you, Mr. Castellanato. I, oh, yeah, I, oh, I see you've noticed too. Um, well, she's a wizard, Larry. Yes? No? Reference? The posters? N nothing? Nothing? Obliviate. No? Get him, Tammy! Run! Run! <laughs> Eat Tammy! <laughs> I'm grateful for the Harry Potter franchise. Yeah. I really still am. It was a whole series of stories and adventures that, sh that told you the truth, that sometimes the, there's a difference between what's right and what's easy. To find that when you get up and you go, end up going to like college and crap like that. <laughs> and it's inevitable too. You will at, at some point, you will at some point, I mean, lose friends and family and loved ones. But what's even worse is when you have no choice. I'm talking about, of course, um, losing a dear friend to the newest Persona game. Because my nephew got it last month, and I had to hear the news from his mother. And she was on the phone, I tried talking to him, because the doctor said they can hear voices. We just want to know if he's gonna be okay. We just want, we just have to have hope, we just have to keep praying, eventually, we're gonna have to break the news to his grandmother, live through this pain all over again. Like you can, you can turn off the TV, you know that, right? <laughs> I'm in the middle of seven and I'm the only boy. Take your time thinking about what Christmas looked like in my household. I have six sisters and they're at their age where they're all in like some kind of uterine arms race to crap out as many kids as possible. They're like showing us, here's the new baby, here's the x-ray baby, here's the house we bought, here's the car we bought. And my wife and I are like, here's our brand new PlayStation 4, you guys. We're just, we're just so blessed because we've been praying and we didn't even know if we wanted Final Fantasy or, or, or not. We just, we just put it in God's hands and if one showed up, we'd be so happy for it. You know, it's like we weren't planning, but whenever God wants, God's gonna get. We're just so thankful that it's refurbished and healthy and running fine. We haven't even thought of a nickname yet. Because we know what runs on my side of the family. <laughs> I thought I would experiment with that one. Marvel Comics, in other news, is uh, ready to blame their low sales for the last year on new comic lines featuring characters of color. Boo! Boo! White guys don't want to see people that look different than them. Boo! Women apparently don't read comics. They're only half of the entire literate population! You would think at some point they would think to blame, I don't know, maybe the writers suck! Because you need, you need an imagination to work for Marvel Comics. You need an imagination just to believe that Spider-Man villains are a threat. They're just old guys in, in, in hand-me-down fursuits. They're not even threats. The Vulture, an old guy in a hang glider. That's not a threatening villain. Doc Ock, the old weird steampunk guy who never drops out a character. Not a threat. The Rhino. <laughs> I wonder what he does. He's just a bitch juggernaut. It doesn't even work. Or Spider-Man's greatest villain, the Scorpion. A bug dude with an angry butt. Any version is just swinging his hiney. That's not a threat. Or the Green Goblin, which is just the Hobgoblin, but with mold. Maybe he'll give Spider-Man the sniffles. Venom! There's a great villain! No, Venom is literally a guy wearing a hand-me-down t-shirt from Peter Parker. He is literally both the t-shirt you got from your ex-girlfriend and the ex-girlfriend. <laughs> then one of my all-time favorites, secretly, I should tell you this, my all-time favorite Spider-Man villain in terms of ridiculous, Craven the Hunter. 
Okay, the original Lion King. This man unironically wears a lion's head and mane like he's about to enter RuPaul's Drag Race and win. He looks fabulous and he's a big beefy Russian guy who will only, thank you robot, who will only hunt the most dangerous prey. The most dangerous prey is a spider. Uh, <laughs> there's like four animals there. More deadly than a spider. And like, he's been trying to kill Peter Parker since 1964, and he's never thought to bring like what, a rolled up magazine? A plastic cup and maybe a note card to slide it underneath? You go out here, Peter. You go out here, Peter. Goodbye now, Peter. He, what, you're trying to beat up a teenager dressed like a bug. You're trying to be, he's a freaking millennial. Send him some hate quotes on Twitter and take away his phone. He'll be powerless. He'll be powerless. I don't know if Daredevil likes my tweet or not. How will I keep living? <laughs> nerds. Little <laughs> nerds. <laughs> if anyone is curious what I have, uh, been producing the last year, because I have been just as curious as well. <laughs> I'm not gonna say me, but uh, a very close friend and pseudonym of mine has been producing homoerotica science fiction novels on audible.com. That's about the reaction it deserves, too. Because I secretly love horribly written smut. It's so much fun. You have no it's so much fun. And that pseudonym may or may not have written a uh, new novella and audiobook available for one dollar with all the sales go to the ACLU and the Trevor Project. It may or may not be called Excess of Evil, an alternatively factual Trump Putin's romance. If you'd like a slip for it, come talk to my friend after the show. I, um, I personally never thought or believed that I would ever get here. Uh, I knew I would get in front of a bunch of nerds and start screaming. I mean, that was all of college for me. I was LARPing for two and a half years. <laughs> we were 24 7 too. As long as you had the armband, you were in game and in character. It didn't matter what was going to happen. Uh, but as I've been announcing uh, this year, so I've been noticing a lot of very familiar faces over the years, which I think is magnificent. I've seen people meet up here at a con. I've seen them get married at cons. I'm seeing now babies in strollers whom I remember their parents back when their daddies had hair back at a con. <laughs> because Anime Next was my very first anime convention. I tried the New York Comic Con and I realized I'm home. Everything and everyone is dressed like something that I either grew up loving or want to start watching now and I had it put for everything. I sat in on the anime parliament at the original New York uh, Comic Con. They said, have you heard of Anime Next? It's a convention just for anime. Oh, is this close to getting a Dragon Ball Z tattoo with a forced ID? <laughs> I will gladly go to that. Where is that happening, Guthur? <laughs> and I found a community. I found a home. Which is why it is so hard to say and announce that, yeah, this will be my last year in the convention circuit. Aww. I'm going to finish out this year strong. I'm going to still go to every show that has rented me out this year. But I'll find, I'll find and figure out what the next step is. I'll free up the space and give you guys a chance to step up and do even better than I could have ever hoped to do. So from the bottom of my heart to each and every one of you, I hope you someday look forward to seeing each other and being enthusiastic on meeting each other the way that I have been for the last 10 years to come to this show year after year after year after different location after concert circus because it's amazing what this kind of consistent community can do for you what it can lift you up because I don't know if you know this but the world kind of sucks outside once you leave the con and it kind of has just a wee bit so when things make no sense you love. When you doubt, you love. When you don't know why you're gonna get out of bed that morning, you love because you are the only person who can enjoy your life and share that with someone else. When you fail, you love. When you're hungry, you love. When you meet someone new, when you meet something you don't know, you love and you spread that because that is the best thing that you can do to the people in your life. 
We have all at some point been an outsider, even with our identical twin, if you ever find them, or even evil robotic twin. They're out there! <laughs> Give me my conspiracy theories! <laughs> They're out there. But if everyone at some point can feel that weird and awkward, then we are all the same guys. So keep in mind with that when things get weird, guys. Just from the bottom of my heart, may you someday love you guys the way that I do. I look forward to the rest of this weekend with Cosplay Pro Wrestling, with hosting your, with emceeing your Cosplay Masquerade tomorrow, with giving it everything that I've got. Because knowing that there is this community here of nerds, of anime fans, that will get you through things you don't even know are coming. I wrote this originally for uh, PonyCon, but I feel that the I feel that the sincerity will ring true with this crowd as well. I'm gonna wrap up with this uh, spoken word poem. It is called "The Word of the Herd," and I am still gonna be there on the YouTube page. I will still be there on Spotify, iTunes, and Amazon. I will figure out how to be even better because the freedom of being able to leave means you have the freedom to come back, or you have the freedom to get yet another cat and just. Decide to be a crazy cat dad, like the internet pushes you to be, and pushes you to be, and why did we need a fourth? I'm thinking maybe even a fifth. We need the elements, never spent, never bent, never mind what the haters or the trolls meant. We need faith into friendship to the end of ship, despite the distance. Join up the resistance and alarm that no matter who promises harm on me or to leave a scar on me, we'll stand to the joy and bring out the charmony of harmony. Be honest to the best of us. What that meant to us was that you'd be true and confess to us, be right and left of us. And when they press against us and mess with us, you'd honestly stand with the rest of us. May the outside world be surprised by us and our ample example of nerd dumb. Let them accept and be fine by us, nice to us, not to blindly undermine or whine, but shine and pull a flutter shine, maybe be a little kind to us so that they'll cry with us until we spread loyalty to what we've learned and earned, ignored what's been spurned, and we turn the world to the herd mentality for which we yearn, that love would take the reins of our brains and retaliate, that every fan reach out with generosity reciprocity and that our ferocity is harmony see what we mean and return to the peace that we need to see and believe what we can achieve and after that conflict then bring on the laughter not half of it but show that the darkness is laughable not affable or contagious in any time or ages under any reign of any mages who would gauge us or steal the stage from us show them responsibility and friendship is ageless and raised cageless and show our hearts open and rageless that that their hate will not phase us and for all the cynics may they believe in the need to see magic and the surge and the urge when a community hears the word of the herd against all that is tragic and the madness of today may they who say nay hear the word they deserve not to conserve or be concerned that harmony and love will find a way no matter what the voices out there or the ones in here tell you you are not alone. For the last decade of my damn life, and the best decade, thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming out. Live, laugh, no. <laughs> See you, space cowboy. <laughs> thank you so much.